It's a great pleasure to welcome to our stage someone who has already been welcomed into many of our homes, be it as an author, television host, or at least in the case of me and my wife, that crazy person on the DVD player screaming that she's going to get us in shape. The reason that Jillian Michaels and Giancarlo Cersich, who will henceforth be known as G, are going to join us on that stage is that they haven't just been welcomed into our homes, but they've been welcomed into the business as well. Jillian has been an investor in food and beverage companies in the past with brands like Crave Jerky and Pop Chips, as well as eBoost. She's currently an investor in Aqua Hydrate, and recently the pair became majority owners of Lucky Jack Coffee. On the CPG and health and wellness side, they're also involved with Thrive Market and Flywheel, among other ventures. They themselves are disruptors, they're innovators, they're constantly looking to create and increase those communities that we've talked about. What they do is bring them together. Last week, Jillian was referenced by the founder of Crave, for example, for helping bring the brand to women. Now Jillian is doing something very similar for Aqua Hydrate. So let's hear about how this fitness and wellness community comes together from a branding and marketing standpoint in the beverage industry as well. Please welcome Jillian Michaels and G. Great to have you here. Thank you for that beautiful welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, you get on my couch. Couch. Would you like to be here? Yeah. Put this in a point of prominence just in case you thought I actually needed water. No. Just want to make you all aware. She is taking a bra branding cue supplied by Rohan Oza, who I guess you've worked with in the past, right? Definitely, yeah. So why the hell would you guys want to be involved in the beverage business? Well, to be honest, for me, it isn't about the, the beverage business. It's about finding better for you products uh, that I think people will enjoy. And it's taking America's favorites and making them over, giving them a makeover in a way that's healthy. People love coffee, obviously. It's no secret. But coffee is the second heaviest sprayed crop in the world with pesticides. So if it's not organic, it's not good for you. Uh, with that said, cold brew is also much healthier for you than hot brew because it doesn't have the acids and the tannins, etc. So The immediate health benefit. Absolutely. So for me, I love coffee, but I needed to be healthier. And when we found Lucky Jack, I called him. When you found Lucky Jack. Well, I, he doesn't drink coffee, <laughs> so, which is crazy. And uh, I called him and I was like, you know, I love this product. The branding is fun. It's organic. It's in a glass bottle. It's nitro infused. It has espresso concentrate. So it's better for you than the other options. It tastes better than the other options. And I think the branding's cooler than the other options. And I was like, get, get into it, do your thing. And then he took over from there. That's, that's, when, that's what this guy does. So what's your thing? My thing is basically um, having, Jill and I have been doing this for about nine years. And there, we've learned a lot through our first investments of Sodalicious and Pop Chips and along the way. And there was a real opportunity with this particular company to have... Um, operational control of the business. And that was important for us. I felt that we had graduated and could take this on. Um, our partners uh, involved in the business have had great success in different sectors of business, and we have a great network of relationships. So we felt that it was time to step up our game and instead of being passive investors, uh, take on a challenge of being operational and thus far, I mean, we acquired the company in December. We have uh, majority control of the company. We also control the board. But in a short six months, we have 
really seen the trajectory of what this business can do, what this category can do, and obviously most recently Starbucks announcing that Nitro Cold Brew is being considered, well, Cold Brew is currently in their locations, but Nitro is you know, on its way for us is great because now there's a much greater awareness and much greater adoption of this type of product. Ours being a premium product, we think it could be a win-win. Um, a lot of people think of Starbucks as being premium, maybe not in this room, but out there in the world. Um, what is it that you guys hope to be able to bring to the product as well as what the product has that, that you think will help ignite it? So you mean beyond, beyond the fact that it's organic and so on, what do you think will bring? Well, yeah. this guy brings his sales expertise. Um, and so he's already, you can speak to the distribution that you have. Yeah, I see three of my rock stars right there. Exponentially <laughs> in, in a short period of time. But I think that I can help bring awareness because I have a megaphone. And so over time, it is a gradual process of, of educating people about why organic is important in the space. And we're equally priced to the competitors and we're organic. Why wouldn't you choose ours? In some cases, we're even more affordable. But we see other organic brands out there. They're not nitro. So okay. then I, we beat them all the way around. So whatever he sends me, I'm like, that might be organic, but it's not nitro. That one's nitro, but it's not organic. That one's neither. The branding on that's not good. The flavor profile of ours is better. We have a guy that's like a brilliant genius back there who's literally we're trying to get this secret it's like a secret formula that we can't get out of this guy but i mean he's like how he grinds the beans how the, for the surface area of and flavor and how long he grinds them for and the espresso concentrate he infuses it with like he's sort of a genius with it um and i just think the product is superior and i have the ability to bring a megaphone to it with a public persona and his business expertise are allowing us to take the product to the next level. Now, there are a lot of brands here, a lot of owners here, who'd like to be able to deploy the kind of megaphone you bring, if not your own megaphone. What's the best way to uh, get that working? I mean, what, what are the sort of best practices for the Jillian Michaels? Well, I, I would say I would recommend, first off, do a brand study. Understand who your customer is, who your, cu your product speaks to. Um, yes, while Jillian is involved in Lucky Jack, um, currently my co-CEO, Matt Amarati, who's a, a branding specialist, we are going through that exactly right now and really understanding who is drinking nitro cold brew. And in this particular case, does Jillian necessarily speak to that consumer in a way that we believe will be most effective? However, because we're going after the natural channel, because we're going after a conventional and club, there might be a bigger play for us in club, I mean, excuse me, in conventional than in the natural channel with Jillian. It just depends. So, and obviously we're looking at celebrity seating. We know how well that works um, and all that sort of stuff. So I would really understand who your customer is, who you're selling to, and how you're going to speak to them and what are the best tools that you have in your toolbox um, to either use or acquire. So you're one of the owners, but you might not be the face of or the voice of the brand. We, we find that it's important with any product, whether it's if you look at Lady Gaga and headphones, the Beats, they tried to do all these celebrity deals for celebrity headphones they didn't sell. But when the celebrity endorsed the original brand, it helped raise awareness and drive sales. I think nowadays the millennial generation, they don't want to buy Jillian coffee. Uh, they, they want to think for themselves. But if you can make them aware of something with a public profile, they might even hate me but they'll hear about it through something I did. As long as it doesn't have my face or my name on it, it doesn't matter if they like it. But if it did, it would probably be a turnoff for those that may not uh, appreciate me, my personality, or, or my brand. So in this case, Lucky Jack is the brand, and I'm just one function of raising awareness, and there may be many others. In fact, it's uh, young men that like cold brew. I, I was just sitting with two young boys last night who, who work with us who were telling me how they discover the product organically and love it. 24-year-old boys. That's not my audience. It's, it's nice when it connects like that. Now, with Aqua Hydrate, you know, it's interesting. We've, we've had uh, folks here in the past. We had uh, Mark Wahlberg to talk about it. And a lot of the activation was taking place at the distributor level, at the retailer, retailer level. Now, they're flipping the switch with you. And I want to know how that 
decision was made that we need to sort of roll out Jillian? Well, yeah, so let's start, let's go back two years. Jillian and I invested in Aqua Hydrate prior to um, the new management team and CEO being in place. Uh, when Hal Kravitz came on board, I told him as an investor, I believe you guys are not speaking to one of the biggest sectors out there, which are women. And Jillian has <clears throat> always been very vocal about the type of water you drink and the use of plastic, but because this is performance water, uh, infused with trace minerals and all that good stuff, I said to Hal, you should really consider using Jillian at point of sale to promote the brand. And that turned into me turning over to them the success of retail programs that we've done in the past with Kroger or what have you uh, and specific brands. And he's like, wow, you're really on point. So Hal led his team to get to where we are and we're announcing it this week. Um, you'll even see tractor trailers with Jillian uh, cruising around the country, which is pretty cool. But again, this is a very hot category. Um, you guys recently posted some, uh, put out some information that it's, uh, it continues to grow and performance water is important. I mean, it's part of what she does every day. So uh, let's, let's talk about performance and fitness. And this is one of the things that we talked about having you guys do is, I mean, you're this emissary from the fitness and exercise and sort of, um, you know, gym world and there's a, a pretty strong intersection set between beverage and fitness and uh, you know as, as you call it performance so what's happening there that we need to know about here well fortunately let's try not to get us sued I'm trying to think it or work this very carefully. Um, a lot of the products that uh, in the past have been advertised as performance products are just filled with poison, artificial color, just a bunch of crap, artificial sweeteners, chemicals of all kinds, preservatives. And I think that people are becoming more aware of that. It's like, hey, if it's neon blue, I don't know that it's food. Probably not. Have you seen a neon blue fruit? I don't think so. Blue so, has always been a big disqualifier in the, uh, yeah, the BevNet so rankings. I, I think that you know, you're know you starting to see, we just read an article the other day um, uh, about aqua hydrate and how water was becoming like the number one selling beverage in the country. And you know, sodas are declining. Soda sales are declining and all the sugary, fake process, performance stuff is declining. And people are looking to things like coconut water, Watermelon water. I recently heard about something called Hemp 2.0 that a couple of kids were telling me about. It has a lot of calories in it, so I haven't found it. I haven't tried it yet, but it's always like, okay, let's take a superfood and infuse water with it. I think that's very trendy. What I liked about Aqua Hydrate, it had similar things that Lucky Jack had. It's a premium product. It has the highest pH. It has more minerals, more electrolytes. Um, and so when you are going to buy bottled water, because you're not always going to have your little canteen with you. Not everybody has a Kangen filter. It's the best product to buy out there. And yeah, it tastes it great. And it cures hangovers even before you have them. <laughs> so premiumization, uh, we can call. Uh, stick around. We'll get you hungover. I would know nothing about that hangover um, thing. I know nothing about that. <laughs> it's all him. So would you say the premiumization then from the fitness world? I mean, we've seen uh, what's the... Uh, Lululemon and those kinds of brands have sort of uh, created that, those kind of same brand prompts as something like an Aqua Hydrate or a, a more or a Suja higher end product. What 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 do we see beyond premiumization that you know that's happening in in Fitnessville that uh, that's gonna that that these folks should be conscious of as they start to either design or market products or brands. Well, I mean, I'll tell you this. Um, recently, I was in a Barry's boot camp, and we had done this test in Miami where we put Aqua Hydrate in Miami next to Fiji and their private label stickered wrapped water. Now we know that Fiji and their private label wrapped water doesn't have any benefits, it's just hydration. Uh, but then I started noticing they were carrying coconut water actually in coconuts, uh, where they crack them open for you, have it right after class, they had buy five, they had cold brew. 
And what's starting to happen, they had watermelon water, so you're starting to see these destination points of fitness starting to bring in what you start seeing in a lot of the natural food stores. Obviously, their, their shelf space is much smaller, but I think there's this constant awareness and demand now from consumers that want to spend and vote with their dollars the way they choose to, not be forced to buy whatever's there. And you can, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I was like, they're selling cold brew at Barry's Boot Camp. Is it something that, where they're seeking function, like, but specific functional yeah. diet? I, I would say, like, one of the things that has really impressed me with regard to branding is Bulletproof. It's a 600 calorie beverage. And everyone's like, yes! yes. <laughs> this is a panacea. And the guy's a, a biohacker. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I think. That word hack is hip, trendy, and cool. It makes a promise, like I found a better way to deliver performance. You'll have more energy for longer, and these good fats are gonna do X, Y, and Z. And I think it's about reinventing nutrients in a way that are meant to deliver better endurance, better power. And you know, caffeine does that. Caffeine yep. is number one performance aid. It really is, it's legal. And, um, but it's eat this <coughs> hacked caffeine, brilliant. Yeah. Genius. So we're seeing recast of nutrients. We're seeing a lot of fat is different is, delivery is mechanisms. In. Yep. The stripping out of chemicals. Like that's I think the kind of that game is in what is what is vitamin water? Oh, it's the most it's the most electrolytes or I'm sorry, not vitamin water, uh, coconut water. But you know, it's sweet, it has calories if you don't want it, if you just want hydration, if you don't like the taste, and a lot of people don't. So there's just, that's what watermelon water is. It's reinventing these micronutrients and these superfoods and hacking the delivery mechanism. But you're still getting what it is you want or need. Exactly. Um, how do you know what to work in and not uh, sort of compromise your credibility in you know, your core competency. We have something that we call kind of the quan, right? So we look at something and we go, okay, does it taste good? Are you gonna like it? Because he's brought me a lot of things. He's like, what do you think of this? I'm like, ugh, ugh, yuck. Which again, I don't want to get a suit, so I won't say what they are, but there have been a lot of them that have had super nutrients and really cool hip pro uh, ingredients, seaweed products, all this stuff. If they don't taste good, we don't get involved. Uh, if they don't have uh, if we can't say, hey, this is better than the traditional chip, pop chips, for example, I always say, look, is it a superfood? No, it's not a superfood. Are people going to give up chips? No, they're not going to give up chips. So why wouldn't you want one that doesn't have MSG, trans fat, artificial color, artificial flavors? We can say all that about it. So if it's better for you, legitimately so, we want to do that. And it has to be profitable. It is a business. Our partners need to make money. So those three things, does it taste great? Is it better for you? Can it be profitable? Yeah, so it can be incremental improvement. Sorry, say that again? It can be either incremental improvement or it can be sort of advancing lifestyle. Absolutely. Okay. But at its core, it's got to taste great and have you know, better benefits for you than the traditional All right. product. So um, what are some of the other categories you guys are interested in on the consumer side and on the beverage side? We've looked recently at um, peanut butter and nut butters and that sort of stuff. And obviously with the announcement of Justin's being bought, uh, we decided not to pursue that category. You know, I'm trying to stay away from businesses that are becoming commoditized. Um, which is a true problem. I mean, we're fortunate with Lucky Jack because uh, it's cold brew is a hot category and there's a handful of players and the adoption rate, you know, I mean, we're having conversations where it's like we're closing today and they're like, we'll send you a PO next week. I mean, it's that fast. There's a lot of competition. There's a lot of demand. Yeah. And the good thing is, is we don't have to wait to get cut in um, to schematic and all that sort of stuff. So we're really trying to stay with things that are relevant. Um, and again, I don't know, there's just so much we've looked recently at. I mean, we've looked at everything from alcohol to um, bars and all of that, but it's just bread. You know, we looked at ice cream, uh, gelatos, all that sort of stuff. But I would probably say out of 10 things that come our way, half of one makes it through. <laughs> um, and that's, a, that's for a myriad of reasons. It's just whether the deal can get done, whether the partner is sophisticated enough to understand how we work. Um, but it's, it's interesting, and one of the things especially that I've learned with, with Lucky Jack is 
Now that we're operators, all those other opportunities aren't as interesting to me. Okay, so just, let's... They just take away too much time and attention, and I also can't have her be in this aisle, this aisle, this refrigerated section. It's just too much. So, you know, I would rather build this up, start cultivating the next thing, when this, if there's an exit, then we're on to the next thing. Uh, but that's a real challenge because we're overachievers and it's, there's only so much time. And, and that's a real challenge because a lot of small brands come to us saying, hey, can you push us to the next level? And the incentives are great and the opportunities are great, but I want to do great for us first with the things that we've taken on. And sometimes it's too small. It's not there yet. Like there's a, there's a product called Core. KOR core shots, love them, and he's like, shit's small, and it's shot, and then all kinds of bizar- business mm-hmm. issues he has. And then there was this product I just discovered called Fire Cider. And apple cider vinegar has been around for 100 years. But but that's another product type that's really being recast as yes. very it, important. The branding's fantastic. It's mm-hmm. been remodeled. It's got turmeric and garlic and all, all these other superfoods, and it actually tastes good. And I was like, this is cool. You should, we should watch this. I bought it, and I'm starting to see it places. And so, again, it's like it's, everybody knows about apple cider vinegar. It does speak to a certain community. But kombucha spoke to a certain community, and then became a gazillion-dollar business. So can these guys do you know, what the guys who reinvented kombucha did? Can they do that for apple cider vinegar? Maybe they can do it faster with uh, Jillian We're and the, we look at yeah. Well, The we other thing, too, now that, you know, now that I'm really like six months deep into Lucky Jack, one of the things that I'm looking to say is, okay, how do I leverage the retail relationships or the distribution relationships that I have now, whether it be, you know, DSD with high touch um, in the Southwest or, you know, I'm trying to figure out are there things that we can put into the fold that just amplify our businesses without having to start from scratch all over again? Because that's, there's a lot of heartache in that. So what are you finding that you enjoy the most about the beverage business and what is driving you to end up hung over like this morning? Being a student. I love it. Every day I'm learning and getting my ass handed to me at the same time. Um, but at the same time, there are a lot of little wins in this business. You know, we come from the traditional media world where you sign a big television contract or a massive endorsement deal. This is working with, you know, true entrepreneurs that roll up their sleeves and have a vision, believe in, and this is all they have. I mean, this company situation was dire straits. If we didn't do what we did, there'd be no, Lucky Jack would be gone. And I think for me, being a student in the space and surrounding myself with people that are way smarter than me is really what I love every day. I mean, she's like, go ahead, tell me every day. Every day I get the rundown. It's like, we got into this little market in the middle of the Castro or whatever. But it, you know, for him, he, he wants to make sure that we're in places where influencers are going to go. And he those wins, but those wins are important to everyone out here too, yeah. you know? He gets as excited about those as he does about selling like We're, I'm just. I'm excited about the, how small the scale is that we can grow it versus walking into a situation where like, oh yeah, we're going to distribute your title in 3,600 WalMarts. I'm like, okay, awesome, grateful for it. But now I really have to work to get those accounts because I've got competitors that are paving the path and you know all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, we talk a lot about culture of companies and. We've seen some of your interaction with your team and you know your trainees on TV and that kind of culture. But what's the what's the culture like in the Lucky Jack office? What are you trying to promote there? Well, I don't run the Lucky Jack office, and it's also not a life or death intervention for employees that are 500 pounds. So I definitely wouldn't draw any correlation to the Biggest Loser. <laughs> and I'll let you answer it since you do run the Lucky Jack office. Um, what we're now doing is. Uh, it's very different than everything I've ever done before. Number one, you know, factory employees, um, it's their own, you know, subculture. And I love it. I mean, I'll be at the plant, I'll work the line, I'll roll up my sleeves and, you know, learn this. And it's great to have, you know, one of our factory workers come up to me and be like, hey, boss, do it this way. You know, <laughs> and I've been doing this for, you know, you hear the guy saying, you know, I've been doing this for seven years and I learned this little trick. And so for us, I, I like to run all of our companies as a family. Um, everyone brings their value in their own way, whether it's our, you know, hourly employees, our full-time employees, our partners, our brokers, our distributors. Um, I like to have that type of relationship uh, with them. We don't, 
you know, we are now with our factory employees because things are going well, they're getting incentives. If you make this much product, you get this much more money. And that seems to be working really well because everyone feels like they're part of the growth and the success of what's going on. A lot of brands here want to reach out to you guys. What's the best way to do it? It depends. If it's for Lucky Jack, just email rs at luckyjackcoffee.com. That's uh, Ryan, our sales director. If it's for uh, general business stuff for Jillian and I, just email caa at empoweredmedia.us, caa at empoweredmedia.us. And uh, Kathleen would be the contact there. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so everyone. Much. Have a great show.